Welcome back to Movie Nights. Uh, I'm here with Phelan this time, and we're going to be talking about Big and Harry, which is um, not a porn, though it probably would be better if it was. Um, it is it is a kids movie about a Sasquatch that plays basketball. He's big and hairy. I think that's the end of the video. Yeah, I'm gonna give you nothing to work off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> On the cover, they make um, Richard Thomas more prominent uh, because he was in the Waltons. Because he's the head of the Quirkinsons, the stupid family in this stupid movie. <laughs> He, he was in the Waltons, he plays the dad in this, but he is not uh, the main character of this. So He thinks he is, though. This was a um, Showtime Hallmark production based off of a book. Um, <laughs> the worst seller of all time. <laughs> I, can, I don't know how bad that book had to be compared uh, to this movie. <laughs> <laughs> then imagine the worst cover of Stuck in the Middle of You plays as they're playing basketball. <laughs> oh, what a wonderful book. <laughs> that, that is by far one of the worst covers I've ever heard in a movie, is that Stuck in the Middle with You. Stuck in the Middle with You! <laughs> Oh, I got far more amusement out of that than the most of the movie. Yeah, <laughs> it's the best worst part of the movie. <laughs> oh, oh, just everything. This movie is so insulting to kids, like seriously. Show this one to like a five-year-old Mick. I think you're insulting my intelligence with this. <laughs> it's, it's one of those like um, comedies that tries really hard to be quirky, but in nonsensical ways. Mm -hmm. So they'll have things like the parents, in particular, the Quirkinsons. Yeah. They uh, they do all these wacky things to show how quirky they are, but it's just nonsense. Like they'll they'll paint a basketball like an eyeball for yeah. no reason. Yeah, he's like, I painted it that way so they can do eyeball recognition if you ever lose it. Like they just <laughs> they just seem like unfit parents. Is what yeah. they seem like. Yeah, they, they, they seem unfit for life. Like, <laughs> They need to be locked up. A lot of they don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> they don't understand the basics of life. <laughs> like they probably feed their kids sawdust. <laughs> it's really good for you. <laughs> who who is at one point they build a volcano for the kid for no reason. Who's resetting that? Are they going in there and like throwing flower petals back in this just so that yeah. they can do that again at random? And this is like, oh, all right, well, someone will clean that up. I don't know. <laughs> they, they Dad, when he's high as fuck and in his cleaning <laughs> mode. <laughs> they, they named the kid Picasso. Mm -hmm. It's just so quirky. Just so you know how quirky they are. Well, those are the rules. That's the game. Yes, but but isn't it counterproductive to to banish the players? I mean, shouldn't we better serve them by trying to get at the root of the problem? Why are they committing these fouls? Perhaps it's a desperate plea for attention. So the main character of this is Picasso, and he is a apparently. kid. <laughs> apparently, and he has moved to an island. And he's the new kid that no one likes. An island where the most important things on it are lawn ornaments and middle school basketball. And that's really what it's centered around. It's like run by one crazy old man, apparently, who... Bum stock! <laughs> I need more stock and bum! Bum stock! So Bum stock is his real name. There's Bum stock, who is a crazy old man who runs... He is a lawn ornament conglomerate? He's a mogul? I he's, guess. He's I don't successful know. because of his lawn ornaments? Yeah, he makes enough money to to fund the stupid middle school basketball and get a throne courtside. Yeah, he has a throne. With his dumb lawn ornaments, which apparently he never updates. He's like, they need to be the same every year. But, but Mr. Quirkinson can't deal with that. He's got to be creative. And he's stuck being a lonely lawn ornament designer at Bumstock's going nowhere company. Oh no, what's he gonna do? At one 
one point he makes a bad prototype and then gets fired for making it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it makes no sense how this law and order in place works. There's like a million designers there, even though it's factory produced. Yeah, you see things coming off the line, but then they have a whole bunch of designers, apparently. I don't know if everyone else is a designer or not, but... Mr. Quirkinson's there, and he's like, Oh no! The duck's eyes aren't right, Quirkinson! <laughs> but I need to be creative! That's probably something. some of the things that make the most sense in this movie, is the Law and Ornament stuff, because the rest of it is, like, nonsense. Mm -hmm. Oh, the, the basketball team is named the Lawn Ornaments as well. Yeah. Because that's how much it's centered that's around Lawn Ornaments. That's how much he loves it. And he's he's on their basketball team, and he ends up losing the game for them, and no one likes him. Yeah, Picasso. Yeah, Picasso. And along the way, he discovers a Bigfoot. <laughs> Bigfoot is terrifying. Oh, it, it looks like it's had too many facelifts. It's disgusting. <laughs> like, this is one of the most disgusting Bigfoot designs I've ever seen. And you know, that's saying something, because those can get pretty ugly, but it's just, I don't know. Like, it's got... It was burnt or something. <laughs> like it looks like he's wearing someone's face as a mask. Yeah, it looks like, like it's a skin graft yeah, it, over his real face. They look like Leatherface would be their cousin or something. <laughs> you know, like, it's just disgusting every time. Like, ugh. <laughs> Leatherface guy. He sounds like the Swedish yeah. chef. <laughs> Stuck in the middle. <laughs> Worst song ever. <laughs> Yeah, there, there just happens to be a book, Bigfoot passing by because <laughs> it's on a journey to find itself, which is something big feet do. I don't yeah, know. well, he learned it on that documentary about Bigfoots. Apparently. Yeah. Did anyone see that show about Bigfoots? The one with the hidden cameras way up in the mountains? Mm hmm. I bet he's been on one of those walkabouts. Mm -hmm. You know, this, the Bigfoot kids have to do. They always go on a journey to find themselves when they're like, 12 or something. I don't know, maybe maybe Bigfoots are supposed to exist before he finds him in this universe, because no one seems that bothered that a Bigfoot exists. Yeah, they, they find the stupid Bigfoot, and the biggest thing is that it's playing middle school basketball, <laughs> which is a whole slew of stupid, but no one cares that a Bigfoot is in existence, that they've got confirmed evidence of a Bigfoot. Like, why aren't people swarming this island like, oh my god, there's such thing as Sasquatches. Holy shit, this is big news. Uh, who cares? How good is it at basketball? What's its, what's its stats? Apparently he's driving away people from the island, because they're yeah. at a restaurant at one point, and they're like, oh, he's doing, doing so good, no one wants to go to the restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> From the rival teams? Yeah. The, Once the, the Bigfoot's big foot. sitting there. No one in this restaurant with a fucking Bigfoot. If those lawn ornaments continue to slaughter those other teams, I might go out of business. And the coach has a beard. The coach of the high school basketball team has a beard. The big feet don't. They're very, like, smooth on most of their face. They got some surrounding hair, but they're very smooth. But they keep looking at this coach with a beard and go, Ah, oh, Bigfoot! Bigfoot! Relax. I'm the coach. You do look like brothers. He looks nothing like. He's not even that hairy of a guy. He no, just has it's, a it's beard just a. All. It's a pretty trimmed beard too, because I mean, well he's got it like you know, very straight along the sides. There, he's, he's stuff. got the full glazer going on. It's yeah, very, it's <laughs> the full glazer. <laughs> the full glazer is very well groomed and maintained. There's nothing bigfootish about him. So they get the, the the Bigfoot to play basketball on the team to help their team win. And keep in mind that this team is not 
a team of underdogs. It's not like this is a team that's never won. This is a, a team on an island that is primarily known for winning basketball. Yeah. They just got one shitty player one time. And apparently they need Bigfoot to bail them out. Yeah, well, Bumstock's always complaining to the coach because of his no, everyone gets to play methods, and they're <laughs> losing them basketball games. He didn't like the coach because he's an outsider who came yeah. from outside the island. Yeah, they're seclusionist assholes <laughs> on this island. <laughs> they're just cut off from all of mankind. Yeah. You're not an islander. Like, that bully... He gets after Picasso, too, because he's like, You're not from the island! You don't know! <laughs> lots, of, lots of hand acting from this bully. Lots of... Mm. Yeah. If you lose the game for us tonight, this is your head. Don't forget what I said. There's parts where it's like, Picasso, you could be back on the basketball team because he has to leave at one point because they're, they're overstocked with bum stock on the basketball team once they add the Bigfoot. And it's like, Picasso, you could come back. And then he looks over to the bully for permission and he's just like... <laughs> he's like, I guess I can. <laughs> I, I always do what my bully tells me. <laughs> It's not a kid's problem. <laughs> yeah. I put a lot of bum stock into what this bully says. <laughs> or at least mimes at me. <laughs> so so when they put this Bigfoot <laughs> when they put this Bigfoot on this team, they realize they need to find a loophole to put him on the team. So because they guess they guess that he's around twelve years old, yeah. he's old enough to be signed up as a student. To, and be on yeah. the team. And, you know, people are kind of like, hey, that's Bigfoot. Maybe that's unfair. They they actually go to court for this at one point. Or, like, well, go to a committee. Court. Yeah, it's the committee for middle school basketball okay, rules. So, well, they, I don't know. They, in they their little have an tournament. Junction for yeah, they have a little where hearing one, about it. Like, one guy comes up and he's pissed and he's like, hey, that's a wild animal that's playing with them. And he's not wrong. I mean, yeah, like, he's completely have... right. That's the thing I was saying it before he even says that. <laughs> you know, it's just like, yeah, put a fucking wild animal on your team, but that's okay because it's around the right age, and there's no exact rule that says it can't play. I mean, like no... it's exactly Airbud too. The little oh, there's no rule that says a Sasquatch can't play basketball. Well, I guess it's okay then. I've read the book, and as far as I can see. It refers to male and female athletes, period. It doesn't refer to species. There's also no rule that says you can't drive a tank through the basketball court. <laughs> They're gonna be the first ones sued when that Bigfoot rips someone's arms off. Yeah. And that's exactly what could have happened, because it's an overpowered beast of a thing that doesn't it does. know what it's doing. <laughs> I don't know how they how they taught it the rules of basketball because it's not that intelligent. Yeah. I mean because it's it can learn ball goes in hoop. But I don't know how it learns the rest of yeah, it. Like how it where learns the like ball goes. the dribble and how many steps you can take without dribbling. Like. <laughs> yeah. Apparently like, they they taught it that somehow off yeah. screen. Yeah. <laughs> it, it understands perfectly. But then it's still eating like teacups later after it's been playing basketball. So clearly it's got a firm grasp on how humans act. <laughs> he learned during stuck in the middle. And the everything about basketball. <laughs> At one point, the Sasquatch, he's feeling sad because he misses his family. And he goes out to the woods in the middle of the night, uh, and this is around winter time, and he's freezing to death <laughs> out in the snow. I don't know how this Sasquatch lived when, when he can't survive in the snow one night, because he gets a cold from this. He gets a cold because he's out in the snow. But where the fuck did he live before that? The uh, mountains. Apparently in the mountains. Which is where it'd be colder. Him and his family are so stupid. Like, it's like they're too stupid to live. Yeah, they are nature's mistake. <laughs> like, clearly nature wants these things to die off because they should not be if they're too stupid to live in the wild. 
<laughs> they are too like sensitive to live in their own climate. Apparently, how did they ever survive? Like, if you ever wanted a movie that is supporting Darwinism, you, you yeah. watch Big and Harry. <laughs> because that clearly they are too stupid to live. Yeah. And then I assume they went up to the mountains and died at the end. <laughs> Yeah, they went back to the mountain. No, no, because they said that they gave them a heated cabin yeah, to live in. Yeah, but they probably still wandered out of it one night <laughs> and died shining. <laughs> My favorite bit is when the bully is mad at Picasso because he's not an island boy. And so he corners him in the locker room. And starts talking about how, you know, like, oh, you're, you're not an island boy. No one deserves to win if they're not an island boy. He tries to punch him, and he ducks and breaks his hand. <laughs> Pan over. There's the coach and the whole team smiling approvingly at him apparently breaking his hand. Welcome back. No one lifts a finger to help him. That that coach is so sued. So sued. No, because he'd be like, hey, I'm a Bigfoot. Oh no! <laughs> what do we do? We can't fire the Bigfoot. <laughs> Let's go in fast motion. <laughs> oh yeah, a lot of terrible fast motion jokes during this thing too. A lot of trying too hard to appeal to children, but not understanding yeah. that children are not um, mentally deficient. Yeah. <laughs> Picasso is not popular at all before the Bigfoot, but then he finds a Bigfoot, and then it's like, oh, the kids want to hang out with them. It's like, what kind of message is that? Why aren't they hanging out with the Bigfoot? Yeah. No one cares. The, at one point... Yeah, these parents should fucking think, like, hey, oh, are our kids hanging out with that wild animal that we know almost nothing about? Yeah, well, I guess that's all right. They're playing Star Wars, and it's chewy. At one point... Someone tries to get the Bigfoot to sell shoes for them. You don't need the Bigfoot to sell shoes to make money. It's a Bigfoot. You can make money off of it being a Bigfoot. <laughs> when the parent Bigfoots show up, they meet the parents, and they, they show up at the basketball game. No one blinks an eye. No one looks over like, hey, is there two fucking Bigfoots over there? We yeah. have more Bigfoots? Are they sprouting out of the ground? Like, where are these Bigfoots coming from? No one no one gives a second glance yeah. to these two Bigfoots in the bleachers to watch the game. Also, we were kind of wondering, like, are the, are the Bigfoot um, indigenous to this island first? But then when the parents show up and they're playing to go back to the mountains at one point, they've got a canoe. Did they make the canoe? Yeah, did they go buy that? <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it's Maybe. a painted up canoe, it's a red canoe and everything. It's just Maybe. like, oh, they came on a canoe, of course, I didn't realize. Maybe they met another family that they killed. Yeah. And they took the canoe from them before the movie started. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> We're theorizing that perhaps this island, what happened with them is exactly what happened to that island of colonists that just disappeared and no one knows what happened to them. Apparently they got some Bigfoots to play basketball and they murdered everyone. Yeah. That's why no one's heard of this island. Bumstock Island. <laughs> <laughs> with Bumstock! I think we probably got more enjoyment out of this movie than... Than really anyone should. Yeah, I mean, it really was a kind of a difficult sit. It seemed like it should end several times. Yeah, you feel like you're coming to the end and it's like, oh wait, they met the parents, there's like 30 more minutes. Uh. Oh, and at the end, they had, um... The, the old man Bumstock was not on his throne in the final yeah, game. Yeah, they kept showing us that, like, you would care. He's <laughs> just been an asshole the whole movie. Like, you need to win the middle school basketball games because I have no life at all! <laughs> and they invite him in to the party that they're all having because, of course, they won. And he shows up and he's like, Listen up, everyone! The reason that I was such an asshole was because the greatest time of my life was when I won a middle school basketball <laughs> game. And I was never happy in the 50 years since. <laughs> but apparently, 
happy. You guys and your Sasquatch have made me feel that good again. Yeah. And they're like, yay! And everyone's happy at the end. <laughs> 50 years wasted on lawn ornaments and middle school basketball. <laughs> I haven't felt this good in 50 years now at all to young Picasso Dulap here. Then they go, next year we're going to have this warthog on the team because there's no <laughs> rule that says it can't. Oh, Gord, all the kids! Oh, well, <laughs> stuck in the middle with you! <laughs> we're going to... This island's known for three things. Lawn ornaments, middle school basketball, and that time that that warthog mauled all of the children. There was no rule against it, though. Well, I really don't think I should let my kid play <laughs> against that warthog, but, you know, there's no rule that says it's not allowed, so okay. You're being completely unreasonable. <laughs> this team with a winning streak needed a win again. How bad did that other team feel that they were losing? To yeah. the, this fucking Bigfoot, because it's so not fair. It's not like they were assholes or something. Maybe the coach, he kind of he kind of smiled and laughed at the, <laughs> at the laser coach. Yeah. And then, like, how about the time the Sasquatch ripped a kid's arm off and oh. started beating him with it? That was a really good joke. <laughs> <laughs> or when he shot and missed and hit that old woman in the crowd. <laughs> that, was, that was really good. I can't believe more people haven't heard of this movie. <laughs> So, uh, what would you rate this movie? Out of ten? Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, minus two. I would rate it, STUCK IN THE MIDDLE! <laughs> STUCK IN THE MIDDLE WITH YOU Alright, so that was Big and Harry. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. See you next time. Bye! STUCK IN THE MIDDLE WITH YOU! <laughs>